Hello, and welcome back to Forge by Geeks Playing Kingdom, Death Monster, People of the Skull. So today we'll be facing off against our very first Dung Beetle Knight Level 2. Um, we were debating whether we were going to do this or the Screaming Antelope uh, Level 3 uh, to get the, um, what's it called, Barber Surgeon, now that we have Pottery. But we decided we wanted to hopefully get some armor from this sucker before we go face the Slenderman next year. Hey, Silver, thank you for joining. You did say antelope level two, right? Because we uh, only need to defeat a level two. Oh, I said three because I figured we're strong enough to take a three. Oh, okay. <laughs> Famous <laughs> last one. Right <laughs> yes. There. Wait, would that throw us at a legendary white lion if we got that card? No, okay. It does not. It does not work that way. No, you cannot <laughs> cheat. Like, you cannot cheat like that. <laughs> Oh, you have to normally do something to unlock the legendary? Uh, yes. Okay. You have to have the mask maker and dick around with the masks. I did not know that. Yeah. Okay. So, you either way. Face so, do you think we're going to do a mineral gathering? Uh, I don't know. Think we should just cut it for this one? A uh, light white line level four does not exist, but there's the uh, legendary white lion, the great golden cat. Yeah. Um, butcher. Level we, three. Yeah, we don't. For sacred mask. Oh, we don't even have that option, do we? We do. We can face the butcher. Oh, but we have to choose to do so. Yeah, and the problem is, is that like any of the unspecified nemesis encounters become Slenderman. Yes. So we could face a level three butcher in year twenty three if we wanted to. Okay. Uh, Which is right after we have to face a fucking manhunter. Oh, fun! Because fucking manhunters. <laughs> I try not to think about that. Yeah. Okay, so do we just want to cut mineral gathering? Yeah, let's cut mineral gathering. Okay. But yeah, we have to put it out there, I think, because there's... Do you have a bone pickaxe? Uh, no. Oh, neither did I, so I... it wasn't out on the board anyways. Okay, I only have the digging claw. Yeah, it doesn't, you can't, you, the digging claw doesn't spawn it. It's part of the bone oh. pickaxe. So unless you're carrying a bone pickaxe, you can't do it. You do have a sickle, right? I do have the sickle. Okay, good. Yeah, I had a choice between the sickle and the pickaxe and decided to go sickle because okay. we're always needing more campus. Okay. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, so because Armin is carrying the gloom cream and it is... Properly um, hooked prop up. Properly hooked up. Uh, when you depart, gain negative three hunt XP and negative one understanding. If you have no understanding, die instantly. That reduces my understanding to three instead of four. Nope, I think you're down to four. I think you're counting wrong. What? One, two, three. Oh, okay, I'm seeing wrong from here. Yes. Okay. And then that removes three hunt XP from me. Which is really good for Armin. Yeah. So he is currently... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Can you regain age events? No. Okay. So that's just... for a lifetime. The only exception is the, uh, the thing that we have from the Dung Beetle Knight. Yeah. So as long as we have the benefits of the mastery and the settlement, I think he's still a Grand Master. He is. Which means that I believe... I am going to switch him to Fist and Tooth, because if he's already a master of Grand, there's no reason not to switch to Fist and Tooth. I thought Mastery only gives you proficiency from Settlement. Uh, no, there's something about Weapon Mastery, where if you are the person who was Weapon Master... Oh, right, you get to keep that Mastery yourself. Um... I remember one of our viewers mentioning that. Yeah, I'm trying to double check it right now. Uh, it did not say so in the thing, in the glossary. Okay, well, that won't impact the hunt, will it? Um, no, not exactly. Uh, when a survivor is permanently added, the commands, um, the master will keep the full benefits of the mastery so long as the innovation remains in the settlement. Oh, then I should probably switch Saitama as well. Yes. Okay. I just didn't want to do it before we had the Gloom Cream because there was really no point in it. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so I will pop Saitama down to uh, that as well. Remember to add 
uh, your mastery in the abilities and notes. Yeah, I'll put it at the bottom. Because that's why Storm was so good. Because you could master tons of stuff. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Okay, cool. So that is done. And the gloom cream is effectively useless right now. Yep, and sometime Yay. in the next uh, two fights after this one that Saitama goes out on, we'll have to use gloom cream. Yeah. Uh, but he can only use it once currently unless we somehow get him more understanding. You say somehow, but there are a lot of ways to get him. I know. Six. Five. So it's yours. Okay, it will be on Urza. Okay. None of us are trailblazers, right? Uh, correct. All right, take your random event. I do have a seasoned hunter. So okay. if the random events happen to roll um, do uh, doubles, then I get a understanding on and courage on Saitama. Speaking of ways of getting understanding. Which is awesome. Yes. 31. Strange path. The survivors stop at the head of a path. Small lanterns twinkle, marking its edges. The event revealer decides whether or not the survivors follow the path. If the event revealer is insane, they must. If the survivors follow the path, the event revealer gains plus one understanding and then rolls 1d10 and adds their understanding. Okay, got an understanding. Okay. I'm insane. Okay. Um, <laughs> nine total. The path leads the survivors to a large stone face with lanterns for eyes. Inside its open mouth is a bounty. Each survivor gains one random basic resource. Ooh. That was nice. Uh, did we start recording? I think we did. Let me double check. Yes, we are recording. Yes, we are recording. Thank you very much for checking, though, uh, Matham. Matham. I'll get it right one of these times. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. That basic resource, especially nice with the dung beetle, because we're going to get uh, eight from him. Yeah, something like that. It's a so, lot. holy shit, we may eat this whole deck. Uh, only seven basic. But okay, but two. still, that's now going to be 11 out of the deck. Yeah. Wow, so we have a high chance of getting our love juices and uh, skull. Yeah. Very nice. <coughs> oh, don't, don't tease us like that. Yes. Okay, so first up, uh, I will get a hide. Yippee. You and your freaking hide, man. Tell me about it. Next character will get an organ. All right, and then for monologue. Bone. Apparently cycling everything. And bone. Jesus, terrible. Okay. So, hunt controller moves, or monster controller moves. Oh, there's still 17 basics. Yeah, there's a lot of basics. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Urza will run into rolling fertilizer. You notice an unusual amount of insects and plant life. It isn't already on the hunt. If it isn't already on the hunt board, add herb gathering. Hunt event to any space. At the start of the showdown, the monster gains plus one damage token. Fuck us. Oh, fuck. Well, there goes my useful armor. Yeah. Oh, shit, we really need to take the sucker down even faster now. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and then roll a random hunt event. God damn it. <sighs> 28. And no doubles. Troll bird. Oh, fuck this thing. A rumpled, unsightly bird stands in the survivor's path. Its beady, wet eyes blink expectantly, and it calls out with an eerie con human chuckle. The survivors may archive one consumable item or gear, offering it to the troll bird. If any survivor is insane, they must feed the troll bird if able. If they feed the troll bird, it hops off with a terrible cackle. If they don't feed the troll bird, it follows the survivors on their hunt, constantly mocking them with their chuckle. Um... If any survivor has the coprolalia disorder, uh, nope. no, uh, so if they don't feed it, then, um, some stuff happens, but I think we have to feed it. Yeah, we have multiple insane characters. Do all the insane characters have to feed it or only one? If any survivor is insane, they must feed the troll bird if able. Oh, shit. Oh, well, that sucks. Yep. And it has to be consumable? Yep. 
which pretty much just means dried acanthus or monster grease. Yep. Well, um, I don't have to feed with uh, Urza. I have to feed with only Mononoke. Okay, so I'm going to feed the monster grease from Saitama. I am going to feed the monster grease from um, Mononoke. Okay, so that so takes me down to, to get... five evasion on Saitama. Yeah, five evasion on Mononoke as well. And I need to note this in the... Oh, that we lost the two? Yeah. So we are down to two monster grease. Okay, but those are easy to remake. It just, it sucks losing them before such a nasty fight. We have a bunch of organ requirements, though. So, monster controller moves. All right. And the hunt. Sudden rumbling. You hear a low rumbling and suddenly see an enormous ball rolling right towards you. Roll 1d10. Nine. If the result is equal to, equal to or lower than your courage, it is not. Then you stand your ground, otherwise you dive away. So I dive away. Dive away, roll 1d10. Six. The ball clips you. Suffer two event damage to your arms location. So that drops me to light damage on Mononoke's arms. Okay. Could have been worse. Yeah. All right. Random. Random event. Uh, 93. That's big. Yes, it is. Let's hope it's big for us. Ha 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 ha. Oh, you're so filled with hope. Hasn't this game killed that from you yet? <laughs> Lost Survivor. In a hollow between two identical rocks, you find a corpse with fabulous hair cutting the book to its chest. If the settlement has pictographs... I do not no. believe we have pictographs. No, we do not. The event revealer may read from the book or and roll 1d10. Otherwise, the survivors move on deeply confused. Okay. okay. I don't mind that. Yeah. Can we roll 93 a few more times? Yes, theoretically. 59. Now, what would have been funny is if I rolled 39 just to fuck with us. Yes. The survivors come upon the remains of a terrible battle between their quarry and some unknown foe. The event revealer may choose to investigate. If they do gain plus one courage and roll 1d10. Otherwise, roll again on the hunt board, hunt event table before moving on the hunt board. This would bold me. Okay. Um... If you investigate, there is a 20% chance of the monster ambushing us, a 50% uh, chance of so each of us suffering one brain event damage, uh, and each survivor gaining one survival, mm -hmm. and a 30% chance of gaining a random basic resource. I think we investigate. The chance of ambush in some ways could be beneficial to us yet, since we don't have Song of the Brave. And there's still another one of his cards. Yeah, I suppose that's true. Alright, go ahead. Okay. Eight. Uh, gain one random basic resource. Oh. Corey has left the remains of another monster in its wake. Gain one random basic. Each character or just one person? One person. Okay. It's Mostly it's not that generous. And I gained the courage, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I will... bold is not that great during hunt, unfortunately. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I hate courage, bold. Yep. All right. So we go can, ahead. Uh, expect the unexpected. You are prepared to face any mind-bending trials at a moment's notice. Where others may falter, you forge ahead, meeting the journey head-on. Gain the following ability and roll on the table below. Prepared when rolling yep. to determine a straggler. Add your hunt experience to your roll result. And then roll a d10. Okay. Okay. My resource, another organ. Well, we need organs. Yes, we do, especially now. Yeah. <laughs> Two. Gain plus one speed token for the next showdown. Meh. I only have one speed, thank God, but meh. Yeah. Okay. Overwhelming darkness. 
All right. All survivors must determine their paths and walk them simultaneously. All right, so... Oh, wait, didn't we all lose an insanity from something? I... Uh, I don't remember. I don't think we did, because I don't think that we actually triggered that. Oh, yeah, yeah, we didn't. You're right. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, we haven't gotten the question, question, question recently. All right. Because uh, you were getting them all at the start of the fucking game. Yeah, no shit. All right, so... um. Who is a uh, who is insane and has not and does not have three courage? Um, both my characters have three courage. Mona no is not in, is insane and does not have three courage. Okay. Two. That seems Shit. bad. Spend all your survival at least one to shake yourself from this delusion or wander into the darkness forever. So much for nine survival. Shit. All right, you feel safe and welcome within the darkness. Dead, unless you spend all the yep. survival. All right, so uh, does anybody not insane and not courageous? Um, you said both of yours had three courage. Both might have three courage. One's insane, one's not. Okay, yeah, the the uh, survivors with three plus courage walk the path of the brave. Okay, I'll do mine. Okay. Okay, one on uh saitama you find a half dead survivor covered in translucent mods ignore them losing one courage or spend all your survival to save them gaining plus one population sorry that was uh i said the wrong character that was actually urza okay but either way what was it ignore you find a half dead survivor covered in translucent mods ignore them losing one courage or spend all your survival to save them gaining plus one population I think I spend I lose the courage. Okay. Um, in part because then I can gain bold again. No, you can't. I can't. Okay. It's once per lifetime. But still. Okay. I think that's the better trade off because I'm going to need the survival for this fight. Okay. Makes sense, or what are you thinking? Uh, it's harder to get courage, but yeah, I can understand where you're coming from. Like, I mean, remember we are going to gain a certain amount of survival, but at the same time, is that's not going to even close to compensate. So I've yeah. got five right now. Okay. So I'm not, like, at the full nine. Does that change your calculation? Still probably, like, I think it's probably fine to, to lose the courage. Like, okay. it's kind of a six one, half a dozen the other. Gaining one population out of this isn't that useful. Yeah. They don't get all of our clan bonuses and everything. Yeah, that's why I'm not even considering that. Mm -hmm. Okay, then uh, my other character's a ten. You emerge from the darkness with a new perspective. Gain the leader fighting art. Shit. Sorry, dude. Okay, so I've got to keep blotted out. I want to keep extra sense. Bye-bye, Seasoned Hunter. Leader? Which one's yeah. that one again? Um, it allows you to... Um, no, that's Order of Death. It basically allows you to cause somebody else to walk the path of the brave in overwhelming darkness, which is kind of nice. Oh, yeah, that and is. And then there's some benefits on the hunt, actually. Go ahead. I'll and then Armin is our last one. He is going to roll a six on the Path of the Brave. A massive whale swims overhead. Your guts quiver with its booming cries. You vomit in fear but keep a brave face. Gain negative one evasion token. After this event, all other survivors gain plus one survival from your bold display. Okay. So I get a survival on Urza. Um, okay, so leader. Uh, whenever you encourage a survivor, they gain a plus one speed token. Yeah, that's not that good, but yeah. the other benefits... Once per hunt phase, you may inspire another survivor. They use your understanding and courage to resolve a hunt or story event. Example, if you have three courage, you can inspire another survivor to walk the path of the brave. Yeah. Um, I don't have much, but still. Yeah. And I mean, getting that speed token can help in very specific circumstances. The problem is, is that you can't not do it. Yeah. 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 You yeah, now we'll roll the doubles. Okay, so we have completed Overwhelming Darkness. We now do Herb Gathering. And we're going to hold off on Reverberating Lantern? Yeah, until the okay. start of the thing. Remember, everybody gains plus one survival at the start of the Herb Gathering event. Nice. So we are past Overwhelming Darkness, so we start at a 10. Okay. So we start at 10. I have the sickle. What okay. does that do again? Nothing right now. I thought it did. It, it, if you... 
if you succeed, it gets oh. you to the second half. If um, if you and don't. we have to break seventy five. Yeah. Well, last time we ran into something where if you're in the forty five range, it was bad. I uh, gain one random vermin resource. One of us is not insane, so it's fine. Okay, I've got a non insane character. Yeah. Okay. So I will do four. And I rolled a double one. Yeah. So you probably want to do five then. No double. Oh. No double. Uh, we want to be a little bit conservative if we can, because if we get to 45, we can get three survival. Okay. But... So I will do four again. Okay. That's good. That is 16. Okay, so we're at 26. That's not going to get us really to the... Yeah, so... I'd need 19. Roll six dice. Okay. We're already over the 15, though, which gets us one. 12. Thing. Okay. We just need 12. Okay, so we're already over one. So if you roll good with six dice, we'll get it. It's not oh well. Doubles. Yep. Twice. <laughs> so we gain a fresh Acanthus Strange Resource, and all survivors gain one survival. Okay. Um, that is in addition to the survival you already gained. Who's our character we most want to survive? Um, it's complicated. Um, I think I'll leave it on Saitama for now. Okay. The Fresh Canthus. Because we can heal up. Alright, so that is that. Uh, now we have the hunt event, so... Technically, I think the monster controller was supposed to move like two or three times. Uh, no, because you had passed it for the herb gap. Oh, overwhelming darkness counts as a space. Yes. So that herb gathering should have been on this character, and now hunt of it. Okay. The ground opens into a massive pool, brimming with a creamy and rancid substance. The survivors may brave the muck. If they do, each gains plus one surfeit, courage, and rolls on the table. If you have 10 plus insanity, you cackle madly disappearing into the muck. This is a 1d10. Uh, you are dead, otherwise lose all but one survival and gain that much insanity. Is anybody over 10 insanity? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, what was the roll to end up that way? Uh, a 1. Okay, that's not So good. a 2 through 8 is suffer star plus 1d10 brain event damage so it will pretty much clear all of your insanity yep and a nine plus you ambush the monster Ooh. that would prevent us from being able to, to reverberating lantern yes um but ambush the biggest problem is you have the negative one evasion. Actually, the bigger problem is roll three random hunt events if you don't brave, brave the muck. Oh, that's a bad day. Yeah. So we're probably braving the muck? We're braving the muck. Okay. So, so we gain a courage? Yes. I am at six on Armin. Very nice. And two on Mononoke. Four on Saitama and back up to three on Urza. Okay, so uh, Armin will go first. So the event damage is on two through eight? Uh, yes. Okay. Two. So for star plus two deep on brain damage, it is actually impossible for me to. Uh, so I am at light brain damage on Armin. Okay. All right, uh, Mononoke. That is star plus 1d10 brain damage. That is going to be enough to drop me to light, light brain, brain damage. damage. Okay, let's do uh, Urza. Okay. Eight. Suffer star plus 1d10 brain damage. Don't even need a roll. And <laughs> Saitama. Okay, so we are star going... Star plus 1d10? Yes, yeah, so okay, that's I have to two. roll. Yeah. If I rolled a one, he would have wouldn't have gone to light. All right. So we braved the muck. We did not ambush him, but that means we can reverberating lantern. So then we have to decide whether or not we want survival or insanity. I'm going to take insanity on Saitama and probably survival on Urza. So, thank you. 
Oh, this was the practice dummies one with the negative one fucking population. Fuck that noise. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, yes. Now we need to, I need the... Man hey, thanks, Jake. Manhunter. Very appreciate it. Always love a good binge watcher. Uh, feel free to comment as you go through. I watch all the comments coming in and love to reply to people as they experience what we did uh, over the last couple years. Not lottery. Death pit center spin. Okay, the survivors activate the reverberating lantern. Its unsettling vibrations cause headaches but drown out all sound within a small area. The group can now pause safely while the lantern remains active. Each survivor has time to either rest or tune. Rest. Gain plus two survival. Gain an additional plus one survival for each green affinity. Okay. I would gain five. Okay. I should have uh, done the other thing. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I oh, forget well. what was the trade-off. Uh, gaining a population. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I go up to nine on that character. And what's the insanity gain? Tune. Gain plus three insanity. Gain an additional plus one insanity for each blue affinity. Okay, I just gained three on Saitama. Okay. If the settlement has innovated war room, the survivors use vibration cancelers to allow them to be more productive within the reverberation area. They prepare in silence for the upcoming battle. Each survivor may do both of the following. Repair up to D5 points of armor damage suffered during the hunt phase. Okay, I don't have any. So I actually lost some armor. It doesn't matter because I just gained back one armor. Might okay. as well, just in case I get chip damage. Yep. Uh, remove one token gained during the hunt phase. You know, that's actually interesting. You can remove speed tokens like that. Oh! Because it just says one token. I'll get rid of my speed token because that's actually not a good thing. Uh-huh. Good catch. So that's interesting. Okay. Um, we appreciate that too as well, Math. All right. Armin is going to tune... And he has two blue affinities, so that brings him to five insanity. And Mononoke is going to rest. <laughs> should be able to remove the monster's to... tokens. Yes, yes we should. That would be awesome. Yeah, I think technically that would be not legal. <laughs> Each survivor may during the hunt phase. Probably that doesn't We gain really... the damage token. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's actually really tempting. I mean, technically speaking, I think that if you were really, like, you could technically argue that it should work that way. Yeah, but I don't feel like being, like, cheating cheaters that cheat. I, I, <laughs> I just think it's being clever. This game cheats, too. Yes. Unfortunately, these are light. The invisible. Fuck. Yeah. Why would you use yellow? I don't know, man. Don't use yellow. <sighs> yeah. Well, hey, man. They added secret farting arts, right? <laughs> Thanks, Jacob Falco. Jake o Falco? Uh, oh. Jaco. Jaco. Oh, so he posted on both of them. Yes, he did. Interesting. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> oh. Locations. Now I gotta build the fun. Oh, the fun. All right. So there's all the shit we want to get. All right. Power forward. Separation anxiety. Baller. He's Rat baller. Pound. Yep. Yes, he is. And where's the last one? Baller, ground pound. Bro. Rainbow beat. Hello. <laughs> Thanks, Math. <laughs> well, our people are just watching on both. They're having a party. All right. So we need seven basic cards. Okay, so we've got the Stone Column, Bug Patch, Ranzen Dung Ball, Giant Stone Face, and a slight blue tint. Alright. Um, Two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is our basics. Da -da 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 -da. Hey, 
I just really love the Wisdom Potion. Yes. Wisdom Potion is the best thing ever. Yeah. Instead of consuming... Yeah, I've heard that from several people, Math. Any plans to fight the Phoenix for Black Skull? In theory, yes, but probably not until after the Watcher. But yeah, level 3 Phoenix. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six. Advanced cards. And now a legendary. How many legendaries are there? Three. Ouch. Wow, the fucker gets an accuracy and an evasion on third level, too. Yeah, if Twitch just didn't have that stupid requirement for affiliates to uh, not post it anywhere for 24 hours, we'd probably sign up for affiliate. I'm tempted to do it anyways at this point. Yeah, I don't know. It's always kind of complicated, but... Yeah. I think I could still do the unlisted uh, link to patrons. Mm -hmm. um, that seems relatively safe. Um, and then uh, make it... It wouldn't go public for three days anywhere, anywhere else. Yeah. So... There's our other cards. You would start back at uh, Lantern Year Zero. <laughs> I might take the second hunt, though, honestly. Yeah. So I guess one question is, would people actually, like, uh, do the bits to us and sh crap like that if we were, uh, if we were, what are they called, affiliates? Yeah. At this point, I think I'd just continue the campaign. I think I'd take the second hunt. And I agree. do the, because I just, I mean, it's fun, but I, like, part of the reason why we're doing this is because <laughs> we wanted to actually. Hi, Trav. Okay. There we go. Um, what can I don't know much about the affiliate program as far as like what else we get other than we can receive bits. Is there stuff we can uh, um, oh yeah, we can't do accept bits unless we're affiliate. Um, and I've been really thinking about that so but I don't know like what else is it just we can make money from bits or can people now subscribe to affiliates? Can we give bonus rewards to subscribers or people give us bits stuff oh, like that? Oh right, yeah, Mirix Bob is Bob is correct. Oh yeah, yeah we don't, don't get an option. Choice. Yeah. Uh okay, heavy load. When the resin dung ball collides with the survivor, they lose one survival. Okay. So don't get hit by the resin dung ball. That seems like a good idea in general. Yeah. All right. Okay, so where do we start? It says the guy who closed the book and threw it over here. Yeah, pretty much. Terrible. It's what I do. Yes, we start... Oh, the bowling pin formation. Yeah. Okay, so we need somebody with a lot of evasion up front. Um, or we try to push the ball away. Oh, right, both. Um, so we can only be... The closest we can get is not that close. Yeah, I know. So it's this uh -huh. formation. He so, goes, for, wait, he goes first, right? Yes, he does. But we can run out and knock the ball away before he goes, or what? If you dash and surge. Um, okay. uh, we need plus one strength tokens for everybody. Oh, right, thank you. Because you have red fist. Yes. That'll be really nice. Uh-huh. There you go. So that puts me up to 9 and 8, respectively. Yeah, it puts me up to 8 and 5. Okay. So. But do we want to try to push the ball away? It seems like a good idea in general. I have about a 50% chance of succeeding, I suppose. No, we're pretty high, actually. No, because it's a 1d5. Yeah, yeah. but I, we can actually get two characters there. Uh-huh. Is what I'm looking at. So, At which point, if he does that, he will move towards the ball, and then... No, he won't do that at all. Uh, so his... Yeah, he'll go after the closest threat and attack with a 3, 3 plus, 5 damage attack, and then full move towards the resin dung ball. Is what he will do if okay. we push the ball away. So 3, 3 plus, 5? Or is it 6? It's, uh, oh, it's six now. Sorry. For okay. some reason I forgot the second. I, I literally thought about the second damage joke and then forgot about it. Okay, what's your evasions? Um, mine is five and five. Okay, I have a six. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to put this character here. Mm -hmm. That is Urza. She's at six evasion. Okay. She's going to move up her eight, dash up, and knock the ball. 
if it only goes one, this character can move nine. Okay. So I can run up to the ball and still knock it away. And at that point, it's guaranteed that you will knock it away. Yes. He cannot be next to it. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, so in that case, though, Ezra will actually be the one who is... It will not be the one that's hit because she moves to here. And oh. G uh, Goku? Or no? No, no, uh, Saitama. Saitama will actually be closer to him. Good. So if you reverse that order, because this is only eight away, as oh, long as he yeah. has eight movement, you can do that, in which case, if you need to push the ball away a second time... Or is it one up closer? If not, I can move in and just do an attack or something. Yeah, though you do kind of... Yeah, okay. What's the hit location? Oh, thank you. Uh, it is impervious and super dense. However, if he is away from the ball, it discarded... It discards it and draws another hit location, so we don't know what this will be. Okay, is uh, crit anything useful? Uh, game plus one survival and the monster is knocked down. Okay, so set up your two characters. Do you want to be side by side? I know that ends up badly. I'd split off at least one. And now, can your characters reach him if he stays back there? That's the other thing. What's your movement? That character's movement is 8. That character's movement is 7. Okay, so you're fine there. Because this is only 6 up to him. This is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So you're safe. He may move to here. Yeah. In which case, this character couldn't get to him anymore. Okay. That should work. Yeah. And then that works fine. Yes. Okay. okay. So, and we know that we're going to push the ball away from him. So, okay, so I'm going to start with Saitama and I'm going to dash and surge. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Hmm. If oh. you knock him down, then. Ooh, yeah, I hadn't thought about that. So, uh, he dashes four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He's going to go the one extra space. Okay. And going to knock the ball. All right. For three. Three. No, four. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's four. So we got the ball away. So don't forget to deduct your two survival. I already did. Okay. So now do we get some early attacks or what do we do? We want no. We lose the dash and the surge on his turn. Like I mean, we don't get we don't gain anything from attacking him right now unless we want to try to cancel his attack. Okay. Um. Because by knocking him down, who yeah. can knock him down? The grand Armin weapon. Armin can knock him down. Okay. Uh, but I have to crit him now. I think I have a really high chance of critting him, because I mean I'm ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Matt's like, go arm and go, go arm and go, arm and go, go yes. arm and go. No, and go. it is only during your act, so actually we can't do that. We can't uh, crit him during his attack to knock him down, unless, oh right, because of this we could do it. So yes, it might be worthwhile. But that you said if the but, I won't but if he separated, that goes away. Uh yes. So, so that's going to go away. We so won't. that won't go. Yeah. When does it go away? Immediately. Oh, you when just we draw, draw another one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Us anime fans? No. Though he will move towards the resin dung ball, so right now we know that he can. Um, uh, we know that he that this will be discarded, whereas he's going to move to the dung ball, which is now really far away. Yeah. So we may want to consider. But I want to get probably uh, Urza next to him to take the hit, because yeah. I have the highest evasion. Oh, shoot. I gain a survival and insanity on showing up. Oh, right, yes. And we forgot to draw our tactic. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Little things. Okay, I've been having shit luck on drawing tactics. Okay. Would you agree? Mm-hmm. So, uh, put that card down. <laughs> there we go. Cut. Quad strike. During the survivor's turn, if the survivors and monster are arranged according to the diagram above, you may spend one survival to quad strike. If you do, each survivor rolls a 1d10 and adds their strength attribute bonus to the total result. Uh, if the total result is equal to or higher than the monster's toughness, the monster is knocked down and suffers one wound. 
Interesting. Oh, we need to do that. Yeah. Oh, we so need to do that. We knock him down, we set up, we knock him with dashes, we spend it, we knock him down, we've canceled all reactions for the rest of the survivor's round. Yeah. Though, um... Though if we hit the trap, like, then he stands back up, but yes. Yes. Uh, roll d10, add their strength, if the total result is equal to or higher than my, yeah. Yeah, and like, I it's enough. impossible for us not to be, because I've got eight, five, oh, it's just strength attribute bonus, so I've got 13 on my characters. You've got 13, oh, we add them all together? It says, each survivor rolls 1d10 and adds their strength attribute bonus, if the total result. Oh! Yeah, we will be higher. Mm-hmm. Nice! Oh, that's pretty badass. Yeah. Okay, you cut the deck from now on. All right. <laughs> I actually don't even remember seeing that one. Yeah, I don't think we've ever drawn that. Yeah. Okay. So, I don't think that's worth trying to do right now. We can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can. Theoretically. If, okay, so I could have stopped there. Well, you are. You can't do that. No, 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 well, because oh, we forgot yeah. to draw the card. Okay. If we had drawn that card... I would have stopped there. We could actually do that during his turn and cancel his attack, right? No. I think it says on the survivor's attack. It, okay, you're right. During the survivor's turn. Okay, so I would have gone still there. Okay. Do we want me to move in to take that hit? Whatever his AI is. Uh, it seemed... Well, we know what his AI is going to be because it's going to be a basic action. Oh, it is? Yeah, it's not going to be an AI. It's going to be a basic action because he's not next to the dung ball. And then he'll move to the dung ball. Okay. Uh, yeah. Which might move them out of range of your characters. Or sucks. wait, no, it won't necessarily be the dung ball. I keep forgetting. So yeah, we're gonna take the AI card. So yeah, sorry, my bad. I okay. don't even know what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'll move in and order and <coughs> uh, dash and surge. Okay. So Yeah, I don't know whether or not you can get four wounds or not. I think it's separate. Each survivor rolls a d10 and adds their strength attribute. If the total result is equal, yeah, I think we're supposed to have each character do it individually. Okay. That makes more sense. All right, and it's then it's not strike. as good either because it's uh, because the um, you don't get your weapon. Yes, but no, 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 no. I'm just saying it's not as good in some ways because you don't get your weapon. So the chances of you being able to wound him off of a single d10 roll plus your strength are generally speaking lower. Yeah, I'm about fifty percent. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, this it's is only overall. one person has to spend a survival, mm -hmm. and you get four characters with a chance to wound yeah. without having to draw hit locations. I know. <laughs> I'm just commenting that like it it has its negatives as well by doing that. Okay, so Bonax going in. So I hit on, oh, I have shit for accuracy, goddamn. Saitama. I hit on a 5 plus. Okay. Uh, three hits, and one of them's technically perfect. Unfortunately, there's no such thing as perfect for axes. Yep. No trap. Uh, wait, um, discard this and draw a new hit. No trap. Okay. Um, what does ground pound do? Uh, ground pound, um, the move the ball 1d10 spaces towards the uh, monster. So that could be bad. Okay. Um, if it's a spot with a... Oh, these are all persistent injuries with my axe person. Oh, shit. Holy shit! I swear to God I shuffled. Holy shit. Wow. Holy shit! Wow, that's some serious fucking luck. And that means you deal a total of four wounds as long as you wound each of those uh -huh. locations because of the sap. And we cause three persistent injuries. Holy shit! Wow. That's insane. Okay, so what is my chance of wounding? He's a 14? Mm-hmm. Two plus. Nice. I wound. And remember, you can ignore the first Miss. fuck up you make. Okay, so what order do I want to do these in? Um... Broken Blade affects some AI cards. Broken Wings uh, performs defensive spit solve. What's oh, that? Oh, shit. You also get a regenerating blade rare gear. Does that person have the empty spot in their grid? Yes. Oh, badass. We could get another fucking regenerating blade. Which one gives that? The first one. Oh. What does dispensive, defensive spit solve? What's that? Uh, it is... 
if there uh, it is this instinct. Oh, okay. So we won't probably have that happen. Um, yeah. So the broken blade affects two of his hit locations. Yeah, all right. Permanent evasion. I like that. Yeah. Okay. I think that's the order I want. We want the regenerating blade, permanent evasion, and then just an elytra. Yeah. And he gets negative one toughness. Yeah. Wow. And one of those gives him a negative one damage too. Oh, it does? Yeah, the first one. Oh, shit. The monster suffers knockback five. Oh. So you don't want to do that one first. I've got to do that last. Yeah. Okay. That's painful, but I've got to do it last. Yeah. Um, do we have any re-rolls if we need it? We do have a re-roll. Okay, so if we need it, we'll want to spend that because this is a lot of wounds and a lot of good shit. Possibly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but remember, you've got one free reroll anyways. Oh, I do? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, so first one, we're doing the hidden mandibles. Okay. That's a crit. All right, it is the first wound you have dealt with this attack. Your axe is savage, so you deal two wounds instead of one. Very it nice. It is automatically a crit, so... The attack, uh, if the attacker's within two spaces and is able to consume, they spend two survival. They may spend to gain a permanent invasion. I do. Okay. So this is uh, Urza, I believe? Yes. And we don't have to worry about ground pound. And that puts me up to seven evasion. Nice. Holy shit. Well, I've got the plus two. I know. Because I've got three green hookups. It's fucking mm -hmm. amazing. Um, wow. Okay. Yummy spit is yummy. <laughs> mm, spit. <laughs> spit. You spent the two survival. Yes, I did. I'm down to five. Okay. Because I did a uh, dash... Surge, and then two for that. Yes. Six. That's another crit. You gain, just wound once. Because... Gain an elytra from uh, his resources. Da, da, da. Elytra, elytra. It counts as a bone hide and organ and can be and can make things sharp. Okay. So he has a negative one toughness, so he is now effectively a toughness of 13, which means the quad attack is even better now. Yes, that is awesome. <laughs> Unfortunately, you can only do this once each. like cause Each these... survivor turn. No, uh, you can only do these once. Oh, like, they go away? Yeah, because they're persistent injuries, so they have to stay in play. Okay, this one stays in play when the monster performs defensive split roll a d10. On a one, he's knocked down. Instead, on a two, he walk. It walks. Use the normal movement instead of placing. Okay. Oh, that's still nice. If we happen to run into that. Yeah. And last but not least, regenerating blade. All right. So that is one more AI card. So you He's have a total of four wounds. And the regenerating blade gear. Beetle knight. Unfortunately, we'd have to bury it to actually. But, but it's still not bad. Yeah. And he gains a negative one damage token. Yay. Wow. That was a lucky ass draw. Yeah. And now you'll have to be careful and watch his persistent injuries. Okay. When drawing AIs. And he knocked back five, I believe. Uh, yes. Knocked oh. back five and gained a negative damage token. So you did gain one survival from that. The attacker gains oh, plus one survival and a regenerating blade rare gear. Okay. Up to six. All right. So the top of his card is going to be a parry. So unless you crit, you do not do anything to it. Oh, we've got a small problem. What? Do you have a screaming horn? Yes, I do. You need to scream. Why? I was one brain short. Of being able to do that? To being able to spend in, spend survival. Okay. So Mononoke surges to scream. Yeah. Be careful, man. My bad. I've done it myself. I accidentally spent an entire um, thing, like, forgetting completely to do that shit. Oh. Dung Beetle Knight. Where the fuck is the Dung Beetle? There we go. Regenerating Blade. Nice. Right. Now, what is this again? Um, during the Sony phase, you may archive this to remove a dismembered leg or dismembered arm. Yes. It is, like, not super, super awesome. But... Nope. If you calcify oh, it, it is. Oh, my God, that block. We should one. be trying to calcify it later. Yeah, we already have one in the... the it gives thing. us another shield. Yeah, but I, we can't calcify uh, again until after we've done the black harvest. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. But we'll still have time to do it. Yeah. Wow. It's fucking amazing. Okay. 
Okay, so now we're done, unless you want to move up. Um, you might want to move up. Cause it he's doesn't, gonna, it he, doesn't matter. Yeah, because he's going to end up by the dung ball. You're not in movement range. Uh, yeah, and dashing right now doesn't Oh, it's do dashing. Anything. My bad. Ignore me. Ignore yeah, me. Yeah, it doesn't really do anything <laughs> to move right now. Yeah, sorry. I was still thinking our turn. <laughs> so we finished that. So now it is going to be his turn. Yep. Um, he is, he does not perform power forward because he's not next to the ball and he's freaking out. Uh, pass monster controller. No. Oh, yeah. right. You're right. I think. No, we haven't passed it for the start of the fight. Okay. So now he draws an AI card. Boiling Resin Spit. Anything on the bottom based on persistent injury. Broken mouth. The monster vomits chemicals all over itself. Do we have a broken mouth? Yes, we have a broken mouth. That's some AI cards. Nice. So that happens instead. Yes. Um, so he does pick a target. Okay. Closest stinky threat field of view and range. Okay, that is going to be Ursa. Are you sure is the other guy? He's not stinky. He lost his uh, monster grease. Okay, so he goes after Urza, but he doesn't even move. Okay. Um, instead, the vom monster vomits chemicals all over itself. It is, suffers one wound and is knocked down. Woo! And because he, he'll he be knocked down our entire round, right? Yeah, or no, he stands... He stands up at our round. Yeah. Okay. Though okay. we could uh, dash and surge if we had the capability of doing so to while he's knocked down to avoid reactions yes but we can't because it's on his turn so like i can't get to him yeah you're nine away yeah okay so that is the end of his turn oh but he doesn't move towards the dung ball yeah so we don't have to deal with the dung ball net this turn until he has a card that does something with it agreed <laughs> okay okay so if you fail against this, if you do not crit, then he will full move towards the attacker and then suffer and then the attacker will suffer bash and knock back seven. Okay. So your characters have both dashed and surged, but they still have their normal attack. Um let me check whether or not they stand up. Knock back, knock down, knock down, knock down. I believe they do, because it's just too nice. Blah, blah, blah. Monster is knocked down during a flow. Cancel any remaining actions on its card. A knocked down monster stands when it draws an AI card, a trap is played, or at the start of the next turn, monster or survivors. Okay. Okay, so... So, now it's our turn. Yes. I could dash with Armin. And try to knock him down. And try to knock him down. Let's do that. Okay, so Armin will dash... And that gives him a movement of 16. I will attempt to hit with the Zambato. Uh, I hit on a 2+, plus because he has 4 accuracy and oh. plus 1 from just being a... Uh, I had my pieces swapped by dad. Okay. Uh, and he has a... He hits on a 2+, plus because he has 4 accuracy, plus the 1 from the Grand Weapon, which means that technically he did on a 1, but a 1 is always a failure, so I attempt to hit with a Zambato. Okay. That is going to be a 7. So you hit. So I hit. Untrained parry. What do you need to wound and crit? Uh, I cannot wound him unless I crit. Okay. So I have 6 luck, so I crit on a 4+. plus. Sounds good. And if I critically wound, the monster will be knocked down. Sounds good. good That's enough. a crit. It is also devastating. I deal two wounds. So he's down to seven. I also gain a random dung beetle resource. Oh, sweet. Get a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Though, to be fair, the dung beetle knight's pretty good all around. Sentry shell, hide, sweet. iron. We need that. That's okay. armor. There we go. So that is done. The next card is going to be a Century Carapace. So, plus six toughness to wound this location, gain plus 2d10 strength when attempting to wound this location with a club shield or pickaxe. However, you cannot wound the monster off of this, you just gain a survival. Also, Armin gains a survival and an insanity because he is an abyssal sadist. Okay, so this is plus two strength. To oh, wound? I critted, so he, he's also knocked down. Okay, you said plus two strength to wound this? Um... Yes. Uh, no, plus uh, plus six toughness, plus two d10 strength to wound. If you have club. If you have club, shield, or pickaxe. Okay, so I will then go in with 
Urza. Um, and attack. So I I hit on four plus. Tiss is confused because you put the plus one evasion on Urza. Oh, thank you. I'll swap that. Yeah, I, I fucked up my placement. My bad. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, two hits. Three hits. He's knocked down. Oh, right. You're right. Unfortunately, these reactions cannot be canceled. So, it still happens. Trap. Well, he stands up anyways. Yes. All right. All survivors are doomed. Full move the monster towards the attacker. Done. If the monster is adjacent to attacker, it picks him up and leaps into the air. The monster lands next to the resin dung ball and slams the attacker inside. Um, place the monster in any space adjacent to the ball. Attacker suffers five damage to two hit locations. Ouch. Roll me two hit locations. Let's choose the ones that aren't on the head. Arms and arms. Okay. That's uh, one dry decanthus. And a roll on the arms location. Okay. Okay. Wow. Reroll or? Yeah. Ouch. That's a great start. Yep. Oh, fuck me. Yep, you're still dead. Do you have any rerolls on your side? Nope. Both my rerolls are spent. Well, shit. Well, that's a, a one for me. Great time to roll a one. Yeah. Well, shit. Your vision fades along with the sight of your mangled armless torso. Ouch. I think that's our first death in a while. Yeah, it is. Ouch. Mm. Um, wait, I couldn't dodge that. I was doomed. Yes, you can't. And it's not a dodgeable attack anyways. Yeah. Okay. Ow. Yeah. Ah. Somebody's speaking in Japanese for you. Yeah. You are already dead. Yes. Damn it, Jim. Oh, that wasn't good. No, that that's not a great start. Nope. So either you or I needs to push the ball. Oh, you, yeah, you could still push the ball, theoretically speaking. Yeah, unfortunately, now we can no longer do our tactic. Yes. That's one of the bigger issues. Okay, I will push the ball because if I fail, it'll go far enough that you can get it out of the way and then still surge to attack him. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I can do it. Okay. Um... Actually, let's do it that way. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I will run around to here and push the ball. Okay. That way you can end here, push it, and attack him if need be. Okay. Four. You can push it four. There we go. And Saitama is spent. All right. So we have no idea what the next hit location is going to be, unfortunately. Oh, it's one of those. Mm -hmm. Damn it! So yeah, Ezra, or excuse me, uh, Mononoke will walk in. To the ball? Uh, sorry. Where was I? Like here? Something. Yeah, you can, what's your movement? Seven. You would need to dash. Okay. Because that was dash eight to get there. Was. So I have a speed of two and a digging claw, which has a speed of one. So speed of three. I hit on a 2 plus because the Digging Claw has a ridiculous accuracy and I have 3 accuracy. <laughs> oh Jesus, it does. Yeah, it does. So that is 3 hits. Okay. Oh, oh trap again. Me. Wow. Uh, 2 hit locations. Yep, and you're in Smell World. Oh. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Waist and arms. So, yeah, that's gonna knock me. So, I am going to 
cancel uh, the waste and um, take the arms. Okay. Wow. Oh, uh, not a good time to shuffle badly on that. Yeah, well, I've been doing pretty well. So yeah, you have. <laughs> even though it's going to even out. So yep. Arms. Five on the arms. Ruptured muscle. A painful rip. The arm hangs limped. You can no longer activate fighting arts. This injury is permanent and can be recorded once. Gain one bleed. Okay, so because I'm a transcendent masochist, I gain one survival and one insanity. Do you because that's a fighting art? Good point. No. <laughs> Alright, so I have one bleed token. Damn it. Ruptured muscle, huh? I think there's a way to heal that. Yeah, there is. Ruptured muscle. <laughs> wow. That fucking sucks. Yes. <clears throat> wow. But. At least you survived. That's very helpful. Well, we've got them over half dead. Mm -hmm. Your other character has only gone once, right? Uh, he had to dash and he had to dash to go there. So oh, he did. He okay, so move. he's stuck. Uh, bed is what somebody's saying might heal it, which is good. We don't have bed. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> we don't have beds. That's horrible. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does heal it though. Okay. With 70% chance. Yep, and now he throws the ball at someone. Oh, because he's next to the ball. Yep. Shit. Top card is a century carapace. Damn it. All right, so... The start of each monster turn. Furthest stinky survivor. Furthest. Not me. Um, that is going to be Ermin. Okay. I think. Yes. Uh, so let's see. Turn to face the target and perform baller. That's You're facing. fine. So he performs baller. Goes here. Um. Do 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 do. Uh, move the ball 2d10 spaces through the target. Technically, oh. the monster controller should have moved, so... Okay. Go ahead and roll me 2d10. Uh... Jesus Christ, man. Does it keep going past? Uh... I think so. Yes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15... He loses one survival because it's a heavy load and takes two damage to two hit locations. Okay. Body and waste. All right. So that's going to cause me to roll on the chart. Uh, two damage. You were at one. What? It's five damage. You said two. It's. I was wrong. Okay, sorry. It you, always you, hits for five. Sorry, you said two, so that had me yeah. confused. It's five. Always five. Uh, does the column get destroyed? Does the ball whip around him? Huh? Uh, yes. Okay. So now roll me two locations. Oh, uh, wait. Did. Yeah, waste and body. Okay. Uh. Ooh. Oh. Oh, shit. shit. I should have known better. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm a fucking idiot, yes. All right. Calm down. Yeah, I'm just frustrated. All right. Um, so body and waste. I will take body, I think. Yeah, I'll take body. Um, so I cancel my... Uh, Doritocanthus 
for the body wound. Or for the waist. Or the waist wound. And then go for body. Gaping chest wound. Suffer negative one permanent strength. This injury is permanent, can be recorded multiple times. Gain one bleed. Okay, so not too bad. No. Okay. And now he's done? Or... Does he still have to dry eye? He still has to dry eye. Okay. So now full move the monster towards the ball. How much is his movement? Seven. Okay. Okay. That's an easy fix. Yeah. <coughs> so there's your AI card. Okay. Um, he is not next to the ball. Yes, so ground Perf pound and then basic action, which is going to fuck my shit up. Okay, what's ground pound? <sighs> Monster slams the ground, precisely altering its network of prepared tunnels. All survivors adjacent to the monster suffer bash. The vibrations create a natural path. Move the ball 1d10 spaces towards the monster on collision. Any survivor suffers five damage to star hit locations. Hold on. Uh, please encourage me. You're knocked down? Yes, because I got knocked over by the ball, man. Oh, sorry, didn't know that. Okay, yeah, you're encouraged. Thank you. So I stand up, mm -hmm. and then I fucking run. Just next to him? I mean... Uh, no, he's going to, uh, he's going to baller after this. Uh, no, he's... Is he? Yes. Like, uh... Oh, wait, no, no. he won't. No, he he's won't. He's going to basic action, so... Okay, so you can just go there. Uh, I... Let's or do you... just keep, let's just go to like here or okay. something that's not like, okay. yeah, uh, basic action, full move the monster towards the ball. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> Cause that's why. <laughs> Are you saying I roll high when I, I don't need to? I want to be in the range of that fucking ball. Okay. So now it's next to him, but now he basic actions. So closest knockdown survivor, that's not going to be that. He's instead going to attack Armin. Okay. So. What's his attack? His attack is going to be a four speed. Five. Um, his accuracy is going to be eight plus, and his damage is going to be five. So, so it's five, eight plus five. Yes. No, four. Four, eight plus five. I, I do the math. Oh, oh, I thought it was already four. No. Sorry. I do the math, so. One hit. I'm going to fucking dodge that shit. Yes. Good call. All right. So uh, that didn't end as poorly as it could have. Yep. So the top one is a super dense location. Um, oh, right. At the start of my turn because of Smell World, uh, at the start of your act, roll 1d10. On a result of 8+, plus, you escape. Otherwise, gain one bleed. I escape. Where does that put you? Um, Just put the base for now. Uh, adjacent to the ball. Okay, so you can go right next to him. Okay, and then I gain the Dung Milk card. When you gain this, you are knocked down and suffer star damage to your body location. It ignores armor. Gain negative one evade and negative one accuracy tokens. Oh, do you have to roll? No, it's just two damage, thank God. But I effectively lose a negative one evade and a negative one accuracy. Invisible Mononoke, yes. <laughs> she has transcended. All right. There we go. Okay, but you're knocked down. Um, you yes. said. Yes. Okay, so one of us will need to stand you up. How's your uh, survival doing? I can do... Uh, Armin can increase the survival. Okay. All right, so Ezra is going to... Or Armin is going to encourage Ezra and... Ezra is actually going to, or excuse me, Mononoke is going to attack. Okay. Because, because we want to get that off before you use your uh, grand. Yeah, though. Of course, now I'm getting real scared of this fucker. Yeah, that's fair. I'm attacking with a digging claw. I hit on a 2 plus. Okay. Three hits. Wow. Awesome. But we got the card off. 
Yeah, well, the bot fly's gonna fucking suck. Oh, yeah. First strike, impervious. A swarm of bot flies gushes out from underneath the dung beetle's knight armor. Roll 1d10 and add your courage. If the result is greater than 7, you boldly ignore the flies and archive this card. So I have 2 courage, so I need to roll a 5 plus. That would be a very good no, thing. No, I need to roll an 8 plus, or a 6 plus, because uh, it has to be greater than 7. Okay. Nope. Uh, otherwise, you suffer star brain damage or knocked down. So that's going to be bad. Oh, shit. Uh, so that's two brain damage, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm knocked down and I have to roll on the, uh, the Wait. table. Can we interrupt and do surges to give you the, uh, brain? No. Okay. That's fine. Remember, the brain trauma isn't as bad because we oh. had two. Yeah. So ten. Ten. Frenzy. <laughs> Gain 1d5 insanity. Uh, plus one speed token and plus one strength token. And you can no longer spend survival. Though, can you spend the strength tokens? No. To surge? Most people don't let you do that. You may not use fighting arts and chokes on you. You may not use weapon specialization or weapon mastery. Can be gained multiple times, lasts until the end of the showdown. It says in place of survival, so... Yeah. Uh, so... Uh, yeah, no shit. <laughs> this fight is not going our best. She's strength, speed, all right. Top of the card is going to be Iridescent Breastplate. Uh, if you wound, the monster will stumble backwards. It will suffer knockback three directly away from the attacker. If the attacker is adjacent to another survivor, the, the uh, attacker is showered in praise and gains one courage. So you could run around to here, stand there, and attack that way. Yes, though I have a high chance of critting, so do remember that. Yes. Wanna In which do case, I will not do that, but yes, go ahead. Uh, so that was that. I dashed on that, so I will not be able to chase him. This will be the only attack that I can make against him. Okay, if, unless you crit. No. I dashed already. Oh yeah, unless I crit. Yes, you're right. Sorry, my bad. All then right. maybe not move. Uh, because you can attack and then move to follow him and then search. Yeah, true. But if I do that, one, two, three. Yeah, he'll still not be next to the ball. Okay. So I will attack him from where I am and just take the collision on the other character. Yep. Um, so this is going to be a hit on any on a two plus. That is a hit. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. Last we knew, Ursa went into the dung ball. <laughs> yes. That's right. awesome. I crit on a four plus, um, and I wound on. Right now, I'm at a seven strength, and this is a six, so that's thirteen. He has negative one. Yeah, I hit. I wound on a two plus. Okay. Crit. Crit. So, um, oh wait. Five, six. I actually crit on a three plus. Oh, good to know. Yeah. Um, crit. With a sickening crunch, a hairline fracture shoots across the monster's thick chest. The attacker gains one survival and one insanity. You also dealt two wounds, right? Yes. Uh, the monster gains a negative one toughness token. Nice. Another one. Easier to wound. I don't complain. Yeah, we're knocking down his toughness. All right. The top of the card is going to be a century carapace. So I should go in before you do. Um, yes, theoretically, yes. And you knocked him down. Which cancels... Oh, yeah. So that cancels reactions on that. Yes, though this is going to react anyways. Okay. So I will move in and attack. Um, I hit with four dice, and I hit on a five plus, I think. Yes, five plus. Okay. Three hits, one of them a perfect, one of them a miss. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Oh, shit. Hmm? Uh, we need to move the ball. Why? Because we need to move the ball. Oh, yeah, yeah. I still have an opportunity to do that. I haven't okay. dashed or surged yet. 
Well, you had to dash or surge if you're going in between my character's actions. Because my character hadn't used their move yet, because they already dashed this turn. Oh, see, I assumed you weren't going to bother moving. Were you going to? Uh, if I move, then I can surge to push the ball. Otherwise, I don't know how we're going to push the ball. I could run all the way around. I could dash and surge is what I was thinking. Okay, as so, long as you're sure. Yeah, why don't we just put you here? Okay. Because I can even make it all the way here if need be. So it'll be based on what that hit location card is. Yeah. Um, okay, so I have to do these. You do not have to do them first if you don't want to. Okay. And he's knocked down, so this has no real downside. Okay, so... Um, I wound on anything but a 1. And I crit on 8, 9, or 10. Wound. That crit would have been nice. Oh, wait, those are only tokens. <gasps> oh, that would have been nice. Yeah. Oh, well. So that takes him down to four. Oh, yeah, that's a good point, but it didn't matter either. Hmm? We actually already have a carapace in the hit location, in the discard, so it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Okay, so now... Uh, how does this work? Plus six toughness. That puts it at currently 18. Yes. Um, I am not using a club shield or pickaxe. Um, so I have a total strength of 12 on this, so I need a 6 or higher to wound. Ouch. Yeah. That is a failure. Uh, lose one survival if the monster is level 3 plus, perform burrow. So I just lose a survival. Yep. And that doesn't go away. And I lose survival, and that doesn't go away. So let's see what that next card is. Another century carapace. So you should probably plan to push the ball away. Okay. Um, and I should surge for that. I should probably go first, though. Yeah. In case it would be something that moves him next to the ball. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, I have a reroll on one of those. Yeah. Okay, one of them actually goes away. Uh, in that case, you gain one survival. Okay. So I'll put myself back up to four for the one I'm spending right now. Okay. Thank you very much, Matt. Uh, hold on, what did I hit on again? Uh, three plus, he's knocked down. Oh, right, thank you. So four hits. No trap. Any order. Um, he is away from his ball. No, he's not. No, he's not. Wait, does he count us away from his ball right now? Yeah. Um, but his reactions are canceled. Oh, his reactions are canceled. Yes. Good point. So... Okay, so one of those is impervious as well. So there's two that are effectively impervious. Yes. So the side of resin ball does not actually cancel because it's not a reaction. I'm going to go for the iridescent helm first. Because, uh, persistent injury location. Okay. So, basically guaranteed crit with my axe. Okay. That is a crit. Which means, because it's an axe, you deal two wounds, because it's your first wound attempt, and you gain the iridescent horn. Yep. Uh, which is actually the beetle horn. Yes. And it's a persistent injury, so... Yep. Which may help us. I don't know if it helps on either of those remaining AI cards. We don't know. Okay. It doesn't do anything on these two. Okay, so I will do the next spot. Uh, this one, I will wound on a anything but a 1, and I crit on 8, 9, or 10. Okay. Crit! Monster gains negative 1 movement token. Unfortunately, now I can't wound him anymore. Yeah. But, ironically, he dies if uh, we chose... If the last card is the one with the broken mouth, he dies. Really? Yeah, instead of... Uh, it, like, if... Yeah, depending on which... Because it'll go into play, and then he doesn't have any life left. I will do the side of resin dung ball first. Crit! We're not separation anxiety. Correct. Crit? 
Oh, wait. Yeah, we're not separation anxiety, so don't need to discard this and draw it out. Yeah, and the other one doesn't, yeah. Um, so I crit, I just gain a survival. It's an impervious. Okay. But it says critical wound. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter? Okay. Impervious never, impervious, is always impervious. That's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> and last but not least. Oh, yeah, that's tempting. Armin could just kill him. I know. That's a failure. Yes. I reroll. I haven't used it yet. Oh, yeah. That's a failure. Okay. <laughs> so you lose the survival. Well, oh, yes. Thank you. And this is the last card. If you do that, he's dead. Yes. I can surge, but if we don't, then we do have a chance to run. So, or surge during the power forward card. Okay. Okay. I am going to attack. Try to kill him. I'm going to surge with Armin. <sighs> yeah, Ties is so right. We need to do this. We need this badly. Three plus hits. Yep. Three plus hits. That's a hit. Filthy gut. I crit on a three plus. And you wound on two plus. Yep. But we need the crit, right? Uh, no. We don't need a crit. He'll okay. Just, he'll die. Oh, yeah. No, he'll die anyway because I have a, a, a devastating weapon. Ah, uh, right. Oh, thank God. What do you get? Gain one random dung beetle resource, and he is dead. Sweet. We get the dung beetle resource. Yes. So. We only lost one character in that. Yeah, though we did lose, we did get a ruptured muscle on one character, which renders her almost useless. Why? Because she loses access to both of her fighting arts. Oh, right. But, um, if we, all we need is a bed. And then the 70% chance. Yeah. But so I'm not too worried about that. We do have to get the bed. All right. So, uh, the random dung beetle knight is going to be a scarab shell, which makes me happy. All right. I did not get my fist and tooth proficiency, but I don't give a fuck. Yeah, neither do I. <laughs> things that I care about, winning. Yes. Yeah, a moment of silence for Ezra Scarlet. Yeah, Urza was one of our first characters, I think. Uh, no, she wasn't. We made her later, I think. Oh, wait, no. No, no I, I think she was one of our first four. Okay. All right. Plus one hunt XP. Aw, that's cute. It'd be even better if that was Urza's face. All right, plus one hunt XP. Okay, that puts me two off of max of retired. Okay, I do not age on either of my characters. Same here. I did not get any weapon proficiency on either of my characters. Same here. All right, rewards. The group investigates the large resin dung ball and the network of tunnels beneath the battleground. Inside the ball, they find a caustic but mineral-rich substance. Rolling aside the ball, they find passageways landing deeper underground after collecting rewards, spelunking of death. Okay, so we gain seven basic resources. Okay, can you pass me yours? Okay. If you can condense those a bit, because we're probably going to need the space. You say condense them, but they're not condensable. No, like I mean, just okay, a, yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay, so seven basic resources. Oh, no, no, oh God, that's kind of horrible. Yes. We're gonna, if we find the skull, it's Urza's skull, and then we're going to eat it. Yeah. To make ourselves stronger. Hey, man. Just saying. That's kind of horrible, but I love it. This is part of the reason why I love people the skull. Yes. We haven't gotten a skull in a while. All we needed was somebody... Oh, did you get something from somebody dying? Because you... Hmm? Didn't you have the ghost whisper thing? No, I have to go over their corpse, which we forgot to do because we should have put the corpse on the field. So that oh, we knew where yeah. She was. What would you have gotten? I wouldn't have done it because I still have too much hunt XP. It's too dangerous. Oh, okay. Okay, good to know. Um, okay, so seven basics. Yes. Let's see if I can draw any. Wasn't somebody just talking about that? That's yeah. one. Two. Three. Four. Five, six, apparently we stripped her corpse hard. Well, one thing is, is remember we do get the, uh, we do, we can turn hide into love juice, I think. Or oh, right. into love juice, so mm -hmm. that's a benefit. All right, well, then we get six dung beetle night resources. So we went digging through the dung to find a skull. Okay. Century fingernails, one. Scarab shell, two. Nice. 
Underplate fungus, three. Century fingernails, four. Compound eye, five. We stripped the fucker. We get seven? Scarab wing. No, we, we got all but the last scarab shell. That was ev like, we, the only, there was one resource left in his fucking deck. We stripped him. We got six. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. I think we got the last one. No. Oh, we um, got two fingernails. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Wow. Okay, three caustic preser preserved dung strange resources and one cell. Oh, right, we get the cell. Yeah. That was why we were in part doing this. Oh, man, that would be awesome. Okay. Imagine if you replace the cards with 3D plastic resources. Actually, that would be very cool. Like, you could get, like, uh, 3D printed, like, you know, basically with the resources in them. You could get them 3D printed into, like, transparent blocks. And that way you could just pull them out of a bag instead of, like... Oh, yeah. Because that way they'd all be blocks. You couldn't tell the difference between them. Uh-huh. You'd just be pulling out cubes. Blocks with the art on them. Or no, like, could you imagine oh. if it was actually, like, 3D rendered inside of it? That would be fucking amazing. I know somebody who could do that. Like, now, now, oh, I got a new job. Now that I'm working again, we could actually do some crap like this. I be bet I could amazing. I could get somebody to model these and 3D print them, and then print, there is transparent printing, print it, or you get clear plastic cubes that you can put it in and glue shut. Yeah. And, oh... Yeah, That's... so like you could th like you could three D print a tiny little skull and then put it into a transparent uh -huh. plastic cube. Actually, I'd probably have them make them bigger, honestly. Yeah, but like just it'd be cool if it was yeah. like. But you want to be able to reach in and. Grab no, no, the but probably one inch square is what I'm thinking. Yeah, 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 yeah. something like it's that. Good size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or even two inch, we could possibly do with a big enough bag. Yeah. That could be fun. Oh, God, encased in amber. Oh, that's fucking amazing. Yeah, I don't yeah. think we can pull that off. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, what was I pulling out? How many caustic? Uh, three caustic preserved dung and one cell. Okay. That's silk. <laughs> caustic preserved dung. We got all three. Nice. Oh, sorry, there was a fourth. There was four available. And a cell. So... As the monster ages, the sticky and corrosive material builds between the thin layers of the scarab shells. It breaks down fecal product, preventing the knight's joints from locking up. During Black Harvest, a restorer may make excellent use of the shell, uh, using it to nearly perfect the final steps of the calcification process. Okay, so now we can spelunking of death. Okay. The group investigates the monster's network of tunnels and are inspired by the rich vegetation. If your settlement does not already have it, gain the subterranean agriculture invitation. We already do. Yes. Nominate up to four victorious survivors from the last showdown to be spelunkers. One at each time, the spelunker rolls 1d10 on the table below. So, there's a 10% chance of just dying. Yep. And we have no rerolls right now. And we have no rerolls. So, we have a 30% chance of gaining a preserved caustic dung. And we all, like, there's only one skull in the re basic deck, right? I believe, Basic yeah. deck, basic deck, that's strange research. Oh, one skull, yes, there's only one skull. Okay, then we would have gotten a skull and an iron or a courage. We could attempt the trial of valor, which would get, gain us courage, permanent strength, or nothing. I am thinking that we just call it a day and go we home. We got all what, but one of the caustic dungs, and we won't get most of the benefits. I am looking down, like, it's like we're like, we look down at those <laughs> tunnels, and we're like, fuck. <laughs> No. So in other words, what Murex is telling us is we collected Urza. Yeah. We've got caustic, preserved caustic dung, which is partially Urza, and we found Urza's skull inside. Yeah. And we stripped her for hide. Yes. Okay. That is the end of the hunt. So we collected Urza. Yeah. We collected Urza. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I will stop this recording.